Okay, in this investigation, I'm going to look at a trolley down a ramp. And I'm going to try and work out the acceleration it has as it falls down the ramp. There is my trolley, and it's coming down the ramp. It's being drawn down the ramp because there is a weight, but there is a component of that weight in that direction where this is theta. Good. Now, how am I going to work out what the acceleration is? Well, initially, I'm going to release the trolley from rest, and then I'm going to use, at the end here, a light gate to work out either the time or the velocity, and I've done both for it. Okay. And then what I'm going to use is one of the two kinematic equations. I'm either going to say v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as, or I'm going to say s is ut plus a half a t squared. Of course, this goes to zero because I'm starting it from zero speed. So I have v squared is 2as, or s is a half. Of course, this is g, sorry, correct, a squared. So we've got two ways of doing this. Of course this will be my independent variable. I'm changing the length of how, how long it drops down the slope and I'm going to measure the velocity. So if that were the case I'd want to work out the distance in meters, then the velocity in meters per second, once, twice, three times an average, and then velocity squared in meters per second squared. And that would be my first table of results. However, if I was going to use this kinematic equation, I could work out the distance again, the time, once, twice, three times an average, and then the time squared in seconds squared. And both would yield me a good approximation for what A is in both cases. In this one, of course, I'll be plotting V squared against S, and I'll get a straight line where my gradient will be 2 a. Why? Because y equals mx plus c plus 0. So it should go through the origin. y squared is, sorry, v squared is my y. s is my x, so therefore 2 times the acceleration is my gradient. On this side, I'll be plotting t squared against s, and a small little rearrangement is necessary. Uh, and the reason I put s there is because that's my independent variable. So 2s over a equals t squared. y equals mx plus c plus 0. So therefore, it should be a straight line through the origin with the gradient equaling 2 over a. Okay, so two ways to try this. I suppose hopefully it's split down the middle. Two ways to try it. Of course, finally, if you really want to work out what A is, because we know that the pulling it down is W sine theta, then that's the force. So therefore the acceleration is divided by M, which makes it G sine theta is the acceleration. So it might be worth working out what the angle theta is. So when you get it, you can work out what the acceleration is and see whether that correlates to this. Anyhow, let me show you the setup. It's quite straightforward. We have, along with other things, we have a ramp that's at an incline. And I'm just going to move my light gate around. I've got a ramp that's on an incline and a dynamic trolley that will fall down this. I've also got a nice measure here of distance. So I can set up my light gate equal to one meter. And then 
I can work out if this is 60 or if that's 70, the distance between the two is 30 centimetres. So once again, I'm sure I've shown you how I set up these motion sensors devices before, but I'm ready to go. I've set it at 30 centimetres. I release, display, and it gives me a, a readout directly of the velocity. And I do that from many distances, repeat it three times, etc. So let's take a look at the readings. The readings, I think we've got them nearly all in there. I'll just change the height of this so you can see them all. There we go. Those are the readings. I took the velocity and the distance the velocity squared, so I'm looking as to whether this one holds true, velocity squared against s, g is twice the acceleration, which you can work out the acceleration for a note g sine theta. In the link below the video, there will be the results for this one if you're interested as well. Okay, hope that makes sense.